Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle of the Beach Longsword Invitational Tournament stream. So, Miro, uh, my name is Christian Ruokanen, I'm from EHMS, I'm your host, and with me... I'm Miro Lahtela, also from EHMS. So, briefly, should we introduce the fighters and talk about the tournament structure, what, what's going to happen today? Yes, we have an eight, eight-woman tournament here today, so we're going to have... Uh, a straight cup three uh, going on to the semi-finals and then into the finals. Yeah. And fighting today, uh, we have Christine Consmo, Anna Farnefons, Elin Speck, Josefin Bowman, Toron Sandström, Ida Maria Lehtinen and Britt Sjökvist. And you might have noticed that we only mentioned seven names, so uh, Minna Vasaran had to pull out due to an injury. So going to be an interesting time today. Yes. Uh, now we would move on to our first interview, as soon as we get the interview ready. Enjoy! Okay, so hello everyone watching at home. My name is Einar and this is Jack. And we are uh, fencing with the club Spiff in Stockholm. And Jack, I would like to ask you uh, a few questions. What is HEMA? What does it stand for, HEMA? Right, so HEMA stands for Historical European Martial Arts. Uh, and it is a movement and it's a martial arts and a movement to try to recreate uh, fencing, wrestling and striking arts from the past, so to speak, specifically the European past. Uh, and in this case, it usually means that we try to look at it through uh, historical manuals and sources, uh, look at relevant techniques uh, and try to bring it into modern practice. Very interesting. So when did HEMA start? <laughs> it's an interesting question. You could say that it's been like restarted several times over because uh, we know that like, historically people had an interest in, in martial arts of the past that came before them. Uh, I would say the HEMA movement we see today uh, is a product of uh, maybe 70s, 80s when we started getting access more in the beginning academical sources and then of course in the late 90s, 2000s we started getting transcriptions and translations of those sources which led made them more accessible, made, uh, let people try to interpret them, uh, create like fencing systems out of them and of course uh, an example of what we're going to see today, put them into practice. All right. Uh, so how does one go about uh, start to start train uh, HEMA? Like, what do you do? How do you do it? Well, first of all, you need to probably find a club, find someone to train with. Uh, uh, HEMA fencing, uh, a lot of the time it's based on like, yeah, you have a club, you need your relevant gear, depending on what you're doing. There's a lot of different expressions of HEMA, uh, all, ranging all the way from mostly doing interpretational source work, trying to figure out how these things, but also into the practicing part. Like, and for that, uh, we're also talking about things like needing a full complement of fencing gear. You're wearing part of it yourself, uh, some fencing pants, a neck protector, a gorget. Uh, and of course, things you might see from other fencing disciplines like a fencing mask, protective jacket, uh, stuff like that, and of course, a sword simulator. All right, so find a club, get some gear and start swinging, huh? <laughs> yeah, I would say so, pretty much. Perfect, all right. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else? No, I think that's it. Let's move back to the commentators. All right, time to introduce the fighters a bit in more, more detail. Yes. Uh, first up, we have Christine Konsmo, who, as we mentioned, will get her first uh, fight as a bi. Uh, she's uh, a head of a, a very new but a very distinguished club called West Coast HEMA, or West Coast uh, HEMA School, I think. And she is 36 years old, uh, has fenced for 13 years, uh, does longsword, rapier and dagger, sword and buckler and saber, 
as an as an extra sport uh, does sports fencing, so a very sword oriented person. Yeah, and for those uh, spectators who don't know what a buy is, since we have only said seven people here, that means that there's one match that doesn't have that. Christina advances straight to the semifinals in in this one. And next up we have Anna Fernefors uh, from Örebro Hima, 31 years old, uh, done for six years long sword and Muay Thai background. So expecting to see some good Greek action action from there. Yes. And then we're moving on to uh, Elin Speck from Swart and Stein uh, from the Netherlands, 40 years old, done Hima for seven years, uh, does longsword and actively has a side hobby in bouldering. Uh, we're, we're going to get, see some nice uh, upwards action in, in her fights then. And then we have Josephine Bowman from Frost Hema, uh, 37 years old. Main disciplines are longsword and rapier. And uh, we have seen quite good uh, parry repost Unterhaus uh, today already from Josephine. So going to be tough matches in the Krieg uh, when fencing her. And then we have Torun Sandström from MSL from Linköping. Uh, 27 year, years of age, has done Hima for six years, uh, does sword and buckler and, uh, and longsword as, as her disciplines. Previously done some judo and, and some uh, horse riding, so with the judo probably we'll see some nice grappling actions happening. I asked her today what, what is her idea of, of how, how to succeed in fencing and she told me to just hit the opponent in the head and then if it doesn't succeed, keep hitting them in the head. Which... <laughs> that tends to be a pretty yeah, good tactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've used that myself sometimes. Yes. yes. And next up we have Ida Maria Lehtinen from EHMS, uh, 31 years old, uh, 160 centimeters. Two years of HEMA, but also a uh, Thai boxing background. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of fighters today who have a Thai boxing background. So I think we will see, <laughs> see some powerful striking, striking there. So that, that's pretty good. And even though she, she's the one who's done least of HEMA, uh, I, uh, we, we both know that she's a very active train, trainer. We, we can see her in our in our club many times. No bias here for, for her. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, we have Britt Sjökvist here from Örebro Hima, 30 years old. Done Hima for 11 years, started originally in Gothenburg, uh, then moved here. Uh, she only does longsword and has a background in, you guessed it, Muay Thai yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of experienced people here. Yes. So, gonna be good fights today. Gonna be a pleasure to watch. Yes. Okay, and welcome back to uh, our second interview for the day. Uh, we're going to go through a, a few of them. Uh, I'm standing here with uh, Mina Vassarainen from EHMS and also Ilaria Torre, also from SPIF. Uh, and I was hoping, Mina, you could maybe tell me a bit, if I remember right, you had been fencing since 2017, right? Yeah. Uh, could you maybe tell me a little bit about uh, the competitive scene in HEMA and how it has maybe changed or evolved in your perspective during this time? At least it has definitely developed further. Uh, it was quite accessible already when I started, but the, it has widened even more. And it's, I think it's really good that we are uh, arranging different kind of competitions. I think uh, Battle of the Bridge is an excellent example. So happy to be here. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, also, when you when you think in the terms of like um, maybe judging or safety, uh, like judging rules, uh, variants of that, like safety requirements, do you think there's anything significant you can see there in like? from before and after COVID? Uh, I think after COVID there are definitely a wider range of uh, different kind of rule sets and that's excellent because as a good fencer I think you are supposed to be able to apply your fencing to different kind of contexts and this enables it. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, moving on a bit, uh, Ilaria, you could maybe tell me a bit about, um, speaking of tournaments, tournaments and history of tournaments, uh, a bit about your time uh, in fencing in different scenes. I know you started in Italy, you've been through Ireland, and uh, now you're in the Scandinavian scene. So tell me a little bit about like the changes or like how those differ from each other. Yeah, well, first of all, I started a long time ago, 15 years ago or so, and the, the gear were, w was much, much different. Like nowadays, we have all of this fancy steel like gear, which is amazing. When I started, we were f uh, fighting with rattans and like hockey, hockey protectors. So it was like, you know, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, but much less gear, much less money to buy gear and much less producers of gear. So this is amazing how it has evolved and like how much more people can join because of the, you know, availability of stuff, uh, availability of resources and how like the scene has just evolved. Like there's so many more people doing it, so many more women doing it as well. Um, it's really becoming more and more inclusive in this sense. Um, but yeah, so I fenced in Italy, in Ireland, in the US and now here. And uh, over the years, I mean, you can see that like in different countries, people approach the competition in a slightly different way. So a slightly different focus on maybe more uh, how the quality of the hits is judged, how the historical aspect is judged, for example, um, and how the safety is also assessed. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to move back to the commentators and get started with this event. Uh, I'll be back later with more interviews with other people. But for now, thank you very much, Mina and Ilaria. Thank you. Yes, moving on to the first fight of the evening. We have in the blue corner, Anna Fernefors from Örebro and Elin Speck from Schwart and Stein. I think this is going to be a pretty interesting fight. Like, yeah. I think Elin will want to stay, stay more in the distance in the zoo fight and then, yeah. uh, Anna will want to go into the creek. Yeah. So that's going to be curious to see yeah, it's, who uh, gets there. So footwork will matter actually yeah. quite a bit. And that was something I was going to mention. There's going to be probably a lot of movement in this fight. Yeah, both uh, are quite active. Yeah, with the footwork, yeah. yeah. So getting ready to but begin. Yeah. I think Elian likes to open with the Oberha quite well, but Anna has a pretty decent parallel post against that. So let's uh, see if we develop uh, quick, yeah. quick, like uh, long exchanges. Yeah. Uh, with the parallel post is a thing we see a lot of Örebro fencers having a good, nice, quick and clean parallel post game. Just ready. Yeah. Just ready. Just ready. Ready. Red fence ready. Blue fence ready. Okay. Salute. Enough talk. Let's see some yeah. action. Yes. Seems to be a cut. That's two points red, one point blue. Okay, there was a cut to the upper opening from the from Elin and something to the lower opening from Anna. Yeah, nice parry post. Yes, that, there we see the parry post that that we were talking about. Two yeah. points blue. And I, I think the key here for Anna is to, to get the first parry in. Like, yeah. if that doesn't work, then it's yeah. going to be a trouble. One way for achieving that might be like provoking an attack. Uh, this is what she cannot do, just wander backwards. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like Elin is trying to dictate the fight. Like, she's the one going in and deciding when it happens. So, yeah. so there's some kind of initiative at least there. And I, think, I think we got uh, blue. Huh? No. The only thing that was already up and was red. The yeah. match yeah. currently stands 2 to 3 for, for Elin. Yeah, I think Anna needs to start moving sideways if yeah. she wants to dictate this fight a bit more. Like Elin has a pretty solid start there. Yeah. Okay, so we see. Okay, it was the, the cut to the body from, from Anna was counted, which is a. Yeah. She might want to start with moving forwards a bit more aggressively now. To have more time to move backwards if she so wants. Oh. Yeah, the parry post lands again. Yeah. That's two points blue. Two points blue. Yeah. Elin looking guidance from, from her coach, it seems. Now that it's 5 3, it's time to change something up, yeah. uh, up for her. Yeah, there's a nice yes, parry post. Yeah. Yeah. And since that's so solid, it's easy to like, like see for the judges. Yeah. And it's always when you have two hits, like. There's always going to be some kind of comparison on the quality. Yes, so when your yeah. strike is good, that really helps yeah. on selling that. Oh, now she yeah, switches it up, goes for the hands, yeah. and, and it is a quality cut. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. the match goes to Anna from Örebro. Yeah, pretty good turnaround. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, she did just that where she didn't let uh, Elin to dictate the fight and. and yeah, and uh, got the first like attack close. Yeah, I think yeah. that was key to actually winning the match. Good adjustment from there. Yes. Yeah. And now we will move on to the next next fight. Next fight. Uh, in the next fight, we have Josefin Bruman in, uh, in, in the blue corner and Torun Sandstrom in the red corner. And I think they have fenced today already in, yeah. in a tournament before. And it's interesting yeah. because the previous match sort of sets the stage where we are at now. So usually the person who lost, lost the previous match has the advantage because they have mm. the hunger and will, willingness win. So yeah. it's, it's much harder if you have won the previous bout to, yeah. to actually win again. Yes. So we get things going. With a referee of the evening. Yeah, I think this, this match is going to have also a lot long cricket changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going to be expected. We might see some grappling in, in this fight as well. Yeah. Both of them are very forward driving fencers. Yeah, uh, a much calmer start there, like feeling out. There's no one thing to take unnecessary risk. Yeah. And here, okay. eventually, Blue gets the hit, I think, on yeah. the lower opening. Yeah, to, yeah. towards the shoulder area. Yes, yes. Yeah. So there we see a lot of exchanges in, in the kind of middle distance of Krieg. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. Torun taking a bit of a risk standing in, uh, in the left one tag. Yeah. Sometimes it pays out, but yeah. not this time. But Torun uh, does, does uh, Fiora as well. Yeah. So, so like she told me that she... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, she started okay. with German longsword and move, and now is doing uh, more Fiora in Lin Sherping. Yeah. Two zero. Yeah. And that now usually when you have two exchanges that are long and you have, you have you are two behind, now it's time to change something. It's time, yeah. to, time to do something else, else to win. And, and as you see, she she's go, going to a lower guard, which she didn't do earlier. Yeah. Driving in for a thrust. Yeah, and I think the, it's going to get scored at one point each, but that attack yeah. started just a bit too far away. Like yeah. like there's too much time for for. Josephine to react to it. It needs to be like five centimeters closer to land. Yeah. One point each. And Josephine does a good, a good uh, job of standing firmly after the cut, yeah. showing the judges that uh, this is what I want to land. This is what I want to show you guys. Yeah. And again, we get the the thrust that is too far away, so yeah. the parry post. Yeah, and again, the, the repost yeah. is an Unterhau, as we see. Yeah, and that, that's quite hard to block, the Unterhau, yeah, yeah. actually. And I, I think it, the Unterhau kind of emphasizes this uh, strong posture that, that yeah. she has. Yeah. Uh, I think we see Josephine clearly like thriving in the, in the Krieg here. Because yeah. She's happy to let Toron start the exchanges yeah. because they're going her way. Yeah. Um, now, now we're at the 5-0 place, so some, something else needs to be done. Yeah. So moving into from Dark, from Torun. Yeah. Most often, like, the exchanges actually are won in the creek. What you do there, how you approach the opponent, how you invite them. That's where you decide who, who wins, wins the exchange. Sorry, in the Zufechten. The Zufechten, yeah. yes. Last exchange. Last exchange. Okay. So this match is going to go to Josephine. Let's see if we get some interesting action. Yes. Sometimes fencers like go to okay. half sorting or stuff like that. But, not this time. but they decide to fight it out for real yeah. until the One last exchange. Yeah. Okay. That is our second match. Yeah. So next up we will have Ida Maria versus Brit Circus. So that's, that's going to be a. Sure, match, they, they've met a couple of times in different events, so yeah. it, it's going to be interesting to see if, if Ida Mare can answer to the, the upward pressure from Brit, who yeah. likes to walk in distance and... And, and they cut to the head quite yeah. powerfully. Yeah. But yeah, I, I assume we will see some like quite powerful hits here. Yeah. Uh, that, that's sort of the expectation going into this fight. We are about to find out how this one goes. It's always the first fight is always tough in these kind of like tournaments. Yeah. For, for all of the fighters, you have the nervous jitters, and then you have to figure out, and there's no chance to warm up in the pools like you have in the, in the usual competitions, so, since direct elimination. 
All right, here we go. Okay. okay. Let's see if there's quality cut for both. Yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. Like yeah. A left. And, and I know she likes her left Oberhaus, Ita. Yeah. Bridge just barely missed. Maybe a bit too hungry to go in. Then we get parry repost by Ita and then yeah. replied by Bridge. So I think that's going to get. Yeah. One point yeah. each. Yes. Let's see if Reed gets quality on that head hit. Yeah, she and does. She does so that's yes, going to be 2-1 yeah. here. Yeah. Two yeah. points red, one point blue. Two points red, one point blue. Okay, so we are one, one even one. at the moment, yeah. yeah. Ita deciding to change yeah. guard to flow. Power yeah. to flow, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be a 2-1, I think. Yes. Two points, and I think red, what Brit changed is that instead of just walking forward, she took some steps back. And they're Reed. taking more time in it. Yeah. Uh, There's no hurry. And now Ita is trying to put the pressure on, on Brit. Yes. Let's see what the judges see yeah. here. You can see the angle. Yeah. yeah that's a 2-1 also, so... Yes. Red, one point blue. Okay. Now, it's, now it's time for, for Ida Maria to stop cutting low. Yes. Because that's really Maybe change not something, yeah. 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 The crowd yelling to hit to the head. Yeah. Let's see if that worked. No, it's going to be a 1-1. Yes, 1-1. One, one. Yeah. So yeah, there's a cut to the head from Brit. From yeah. Brit yeah. Yeah. I think I in mean, the initial exchange, actually, both might have landed, but when yeah. you do like a late afterglow after that, that's going to be always interpreted as like you are trying to score desperately in a way. Yeah. So that, that, that's a misservice to your own fencing. Two points red, one point blue. Two points red, one point blue. Okay. So it's 6-1. Six, one. Six, one. Yeah, Brit Let's really see. finding the upper opening here. Yeah, and as, as we're seeing, as we mentioned, she, she likes to fight up high, and now yeah. she's getting the exchange where she gets to yeah. strike from above. Yeah, exactly. And, and then the repose from Ida Mari is coming low still, so that's... Yeah. that's Okay, and much, much go for Brit. Okay. Yeah. So this next up, uh, we have some interviews, and then we move on to the semi-finals. So in the first semi-final, we have Christine Konsmo against Anna Fernfors, and in the second, we have Josephine Bowman uh, against Brit Sjöqvist. And I think both of those matches have been had many times before, so it's fighters who know each other really well. Yes. And when you're fighting someone you, you actually know quite well, it, it's, um, it's a different game from fighting someone new. Like yes. You have seen the movements, your reactions are bound to be faster because you know how their emotions go. But when you fight someone new, it's, um, yeah. everything is a surprise, so it takes, takes a bit longer tempo and time. Yes. But now we're going to move on to the next interview before the semifinal matches. So. Okay, hello again. And today I'm here, or today, right now, I'm here with a man who needs no introduction. Uh, we're looking at Carl Ryberg from Örebro Hema. Uh, Longtime fencer, instructor, champion, and organizer here in Swedish Hema. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, competition preparation. I wanted to start with asking a little, like, um, what would you say a typical session in your club looks like? And like, do you have sort of a difference then when it comes closer to competition times, how you change your training? Um, yeah, like normally we start with around 20 minutes of conditioning, going into a, a technical part that we are progressing on. And after that technical part, we move into sparring. And, and in our club, we always spar three minutes, 30 seconds break or 25 seconds break or 15 seconds break. But, but we always spar with a timer just to get a feel and, and to be comfortable in that. And that is kind of one of the key points in, in my club that, that we should never have, we should never lose points because of poor conditioning. Uh, and then we tend to, uh, like we always say that competition is just a part of what we do, but it's also a nice motivator. And, and normally we will have it so that when, if there's a competition where a lot of fencers in our club are motivated to, to go in and compete and, and do well in, we would normally do it so that uh, for, for we will 
normally do a period where we focus on, on technical things that we might not be super comfortable with yet. So kind of like to build a broader repertoire and be more uh, in line with the treatises. So that will be the first uh, period. And then as, closer, as soon as we get closer to competitions, we normally uh, make it less and less diverse and more and more focusing on, on the core game, doing more and more uh, sparring, uh, trying to focus on what we do well closer to competition and what we do bad further away from the competition. So for me personally, and this is something that I try to instill in, in, in my students as well, is that a proper preparation where you feel confident and if you feel that I have practiced well, I know my things, I've been to, to my trainings, that, that builds a confidence. Uh, and a lot of success in fencing comes from trusting what you do. So if uh, going into competition, to me, it's very important to go there from a place of confidence. And, and people find that in different ways, uh, but, but having a sol solid, fundamental training session where you, you've attended a lot of trainings is, is very important for me and, and this is something that I see in a lot of students. Long answer. Uh, it's a very long, very detailed answer though. It looks like a very holistic approach, uh, if you're okay with me calling it yes, that, of course. <laughs> uh, but then like, so yeah, a bit on that mental preparation side, uh, just as a quick then, do you also have a, a tendency to maybe try to study opponents in upcoming competitions or do you mostly focus on that, uh, yeah, that strong, rigorous background of your training? We, we more focus on ourselves and trying to make our opponents fence the way we do. I have never been one to really think, that might be sounding a bit strange, but I don't think that much when I fence and I don't really teach fencing very very cerebrally either. I, I, like, I trust my guts and I want to be dominant enough to make my opponent adapt to me and not to adapt to my opponent. And that's sort of the way that we look at it, which means that we, we rarely study opponents because they should adapt to us, not the other way around. That might be stupid, but that's the way we do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for those answers, Carl. Uh, we're going to move on to the next round of uh, fights. Uh, so I will be giving the word back to the commentators. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to the semi-finals. The first semi-final we're going to have Christine Konsmo uh, against Anna Färnefors. Yeah, uh, and I think this is sort of interesting because Christine got the bye. That means she has the nervous jitters now. There's no warm-up mm. sort, of, sort but, of this match. Yeah. So but then, then again, she got to rest a bit more. Mm. Uh, so it's a bit so and so. so, like, so yeah. it, it's the advantage or disadvantage. Yeah. And I think yeah. it depends on how the fighter mentally yeah, like, yeah. reacts to the situation. With a lot of fighters, it helps that you have a fight like under you before you go. Yeah, I think most fencers know the feeling yeah. when you have the yeah. first fight of a like pool. Yeah, yeah. Off, but, done, and then. But then, but then again, Christine normally. is quite experienced. She's, yeah. she's fought in a lot of tournaments in a lot of different environments. Yeah, so, so more capable to handle that kind of pressure. So they start going here. A lot of footwork again. We see. And again with the battery post, yeah. yes. Christine striking a bit too far. Excellent. Far, so. You yeah. he can hear, hear that we are near Örebro, so the crowd is... Cheering, cheering. vigorously, yeah. 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 They, these two have fought quite a few times, so yeah. they know each other well. So. Yes, so there was the thrust. Into the yeah. preparation of the attack or into the attack itself from, from Anna? Yeah. Okay. This is going to be a top advantage to Anna again. Yeah. Harry was too eager, too, yeah. too, too far away. Yeah. The judges are calling only one point. Yes. Still, still chance uh, for a turnaround. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I think the most experienced fighters have a chance to turn this yeah. around. So and and Christine like, knows yeah. that now she needs to change something to, 
yeah, to get the advantage. And you can see she has calmed down, so that's yeah. good. And there, okay, there she goes for a hand snipe. Yeah, and that, and, that and it, it's considered quality, yes, good. Yeah. Things got now more interesting. Yeah. And, and she has the reach advantage, so yeah. she will want to fence a bit further away. Yeah, and there we saw like an attempt on the le left side overhaul cut. Yeah. And she has opened always before yeah. on the right, so now it's a good time to mix those up. Yeah. So that's a, five, that's a one point blue, five two. Well, I think she needed to wake up. Let's see if Red gets quality on that. Yeah, no quality. Yeah, no, so no, it was only placed. Yeah. yeah. And you can now see both fencers are calming down. There's no, no, not, not so much footwork anymore. This practical movement yeah. they had in the beginning, and now they're stopping in the middle. And that is that's good for Christine. Yeah. So together. No, it's a mentally tight spot yeah. when you have to win every exchange and they well, come about to say there's one, one mistake yeah. and then it's then done. It's done, and yeah. There we go. Anna goes to Anna Well fought. Well oh, fought. Oh no, sorry. I misspoke. Okay, so now it's again continuing from the distance. The problem with this distance game is that you get only shallow targets, so it's hard to gain all those points. Yeah, but then you can build up slowly and mix up the yeah. two pointers in. Let's see if that gets Action. quality. Yes. No score. No score. Yeah. yeah, it was with the wary tip, so I yeah. think that's actually the correct call. Yeah. I would have done the same. Call. I think she already abandoned the attack during this. Yeah. Okay, this is the last exchange. Ah, so there's no way to win yeah. for blue. So let's see. Yeah, okay, we see half sword. half sword. Let's see if we see. Oh. Yeah. There we go. So. Interesting Anna match. Fanaport, Good match. Uh, advancing into the uh, into the finals. Yeah. Uh, so next up we have uh, second Josef semifinal. Second semifinal. Josef Josephine Booman uh, against Brist Sjöqvist from Örebro. So this this is also going to probably be one of those fights where you see a lot of forward motion in the beginning, and then maybe maybe there's need to do some changes mm. to the rhythm to, to movement. Yeah. And we can obviously see Carl Ruberi here being very cornering. active as a coach, yeah. cornering both Britt and Anna. Yeah, I think we'll, Britt will probably want to open quite quickly. Yeah. I assume it's going to be yeah. a quick start for this match. Uh, it's a huge advantage to have somebody as, as experienced as Carl in your corner. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. The advice is like... Yeah. And also huge. to calm you down when you're like, ah, oh, I think I should get that uh, we, exchange. We see a more calmer start. That's, yeah. that's interesting. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And there, there comes the trust and then get Parry Unterhau. That's yeah. gonna be one blue. Yes. Yeah. So we, we've seen we've seen Josephine give this parry repost with Unterhau. So let's see how And there comes the, the the trust was from too far away. Like yeah, you yeah. can't hit a first intention attack from that far. Now you, away. you can see Brit stalking forward. Yeah, trying to get the point. a bit yeah. closer. Yeah. And now yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see. What is going to be called? Okay, they considered the second cut from Brit being late. I agree. Okay, now Brit is moving from guard to guard, opening up the guards a bit and going back to the center line. So there's this measuring process of Brit ha having to think about what what's, what what are we doing here. I'm a bit surprised that she's not opening up with, with the high cuts she usually likes to do, maybe. Yeah, Does I it? think she knows Josephine will do the parry post yeah, her house, yeah. so that's that's a tough thing to counter. Yeah. I think so that touches the thumb. Yeah, yeah no not going to get called. Yeah. No yeah. I still want to zero, so yeah. this can be whoever's fight. And now we see a cut to the higher opening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we're even at one. Right. I, I think Josephine is more of a passive fencer. And yeah. the way you break a passive fencer is that you, you take the shallow extremities and make them come out. And yeah. when, you, when you break that game, then that gets easier. So curious to see if that's going to happen now. 
Let's see if that. Yeah. yeah. Parry post from below again. Joseph is very good at staying at, at her game, doing what she wants to do in the yeah. exchanges. Yeah. And Breed yeah. wants to open, open like from high above or from the right side. Yeah. So Josephine's style is sort of like a counter to this. Yeah. So. Will that get called as a slice? Yeah, it got huh. called as a slice. Slice into the face. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So now we're moving the four to one. Now, ah, this is the last exchange. Okay. So we see. Okay, and match goes to blue. Yeah. So into the final we have Anna Farnafons and uh, Josephine Buhmann. Um. Bronze will be Christine against Brett. Yes. Uh, now we're moving onwards to uh, the next interview with Jesper about organizing these kinds of events. Enjoy. Okay, everyone. Hello again. Uh, I am back. I'm here for another interview. Uh, right now I'm going to talk about organizing a competition uh, of this caliber with Jesper Kristiansen, uh, also of Örebro Hema. Uh, now to start with, um, this is the third time uh, you're running Battle of the Bridge. Um, and I wanted to ask uh, why Battle of the Bridge? Like why did you select this concept to work on and organize? So many factors but one of the main ones would be that when you generally go to a fencing competition like for instance for me that only competes in longsword you you drive to drive or fly to another country stay in a hall like this one sleep on mattresses and then you might have 12 minutes of total fencing for the entire weekend which is not great value for money uh, so we wanted to test and see how we could improve that that ratio, the fight per krona, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and also we wanted to test ourselves and see how many competitions can we actually bring about in a single weekend. Hmm. So those were the main factors, I would say. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I also wanted to say that, um, of course, uh, we have more than 100 participants, I believe, here. Uh, you've hosted somewhat, is it 9 or 12 tournaments just so far before the event is over? 14, I think. 14, 14 even. So it's clear that Oliver Ebru, uh, not only like your organizer, but your entire club has put a lot of heart and soul and effort into this. Uh, but I was still hoping you could tell me a little bit about... Um, uh, yeah, challenges yeah exactly. What challenges you're facing and also previous experiences with organizing this? Yeah, so, like, first of all, there is a lot of tournaments and we create them on the spot, which means that you have to have really good workflow and know that, like, and know how the HEMA CM program works and how you draft every fencer and give them a proper seating and such. But uh, for that, we have had great help, especially this year. Uh, I have been doing all the tournaments on my own, but now we have deloaded and spread it out more in the organization. And I think the entire club has done a fantastic job this weekend. All right, thank you very much. Uh, finally, I just really wanted to ask you, I mean, we're more than halfway through, but what is your impression of the competition so far? Uh, I think it has been great. Uh, we have seen a lot of good fencing. We have seen a lot of people stepping up and judging, many for the first time and doing an excellent job of it. And I think that's like one of the core tenets as well of Battle of the Bridge, that it's a community building and it's something that everyone takes pride in and being part of and making as great as possible for each other, for themselves and for the HEMA community at large. Okay, thank you very much, Jesper. Uh, that is it for this interview and for me for now. Uh, we are going to go back and start preparing for the final of this invitational tournament. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, the main event. Yes, now we're moving on to the gold finals. We have Anna Farnefors uh, from Örebro Hima fighting uh, in the blue corner, fighting against Jos Josefin Buman from Frost Hima in the red corner. And that's been like now a good five minutes of time to strategize for Carl to give some kind of un advice on, on how to yeah, like, handle yeah. the situation. So let's see if there's like any any new new ideas that come out in the next match. Yeah. And the finals is going to be uh, old swordfish style, so that's going to yeah. be two rounds. Okay. Okay, welcome back. We had some tiny technical difficulties, as these streams sometimes have. And now we're going to be moving onward to the finals. In the blue corner, we have Anna Färnefors from Örebro Hima. You can make some noise for Anna, yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And in the blue, in the, and in the red corner, we have Josefin Buman from Frost Hima. Yes. So it's going to be a very interesting fight, I think, uh, especially movement-wise. Josefin is very stalwart uh, and, and very still a lot of times, whereas, whereas Anna moves a lot. Yeah, I think here matters who actually gets the first exchange, because if Anna wins the first one, then that means that Josefin has to attack. Yeah, because yeah she needs to come out of her shell a bit. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Yes, there we go. Calm, calm. That's, That's good. Waiting, plotting, maybe forcing Josephine to come come forward a bit. Sometimes the defenders who wait a lot to, when you're in a final, it's very hard to stay and wait. Yeah, and there's two two fencers who actually like to carry repost a lot, and then there uh, we see. I think. Oh, that's okay. gonna get called two 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 two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, two, two more defensive fencers, if we can say so. Yeah. And there's definitely been some talks in the corner of the of, of, the, of Anna in the Örebro corner of okay, well, how are we gonna beat beat this fencer? Yeah. Anna, Anna goes low, Josephine goes apparently falls. So I thought it was high, but, but yeah. mm. one one, yes. no score. But as you said, they're fighting for the first point. Yeah, who, who gets the lead? And yeah. that, that sort of sets how it's going to go yeah. after that. Potentially. And two rounds, so there's... I think we're going to see a very low point cap round for the first one. Mm. And, and then somebody has to change for the second one. Yeah, yeah I think that Unterhau lands without yeah. a response. There was an attempted thrust from, from Anna. Judges disagree. Each. That's okay, one, one point each. each. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe the, there's something landing before the Unterhof. Anna moving to Schrankhut. That's not something we see quite often. Getting that parry post on the hand. Yes, that okay, is one yeah. blue. Yes. And now let's and see. You, let's now let's see if Josephine adapts. Yeah. I think this is the first time she is on a loss on a match here. So yeah. oh, on this yeah, and she goes in yes, fast yes. to the head. But yeah. that's always as a fencer hard. If, if you have an opponent that's been bas passive and they suddenly move forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's a beautiful thrust to the head. Well played. Well played. Okay. Referee making some kind of a note to Red Fencer. Yeah, Josephine getting, I think, two cuts, getting scored yeah. the first one to the torso, so that's one way. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why, why Anna is not using her ability to move to, to force something else out of. Out of Josephine, because now they're waiting and playing. Yeah, and I, I feel like her legs are a bit stuck. Like yeah. There should be more movement, there, more action. So this is the last exchange of the first, but now, now it actually matters since yeah. these points go on. Yeah. Yes. Good. Parry post gain from both. Yeah, trust misses. Parry post from Red Lance. Yes. Okay. So, so that now there's definitely going to be. There's going to be uh, uh, definitely some 
uh, brainstorming in the blue corner from Carl and, and Anna. Yeah, on, like, okay, the, what we're going to do. Three, three point lead is like, that's something you can catch, catch up to in the yeah. second round. Like, if I was Carl, I'd just say, guys, left to the leg, but yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that's just, just me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or create some kind of difference compared to to what we saw earlier. Yeah, because yeah. clearly you can't like you can't continue doing the same. Because if you do, then, then it's likely going to be a loss. Yeah, loss. But we can expect some kind of big change in in the blue corner. Obviously, yeah. Josefi might also do like a preemptive change, like try yeah. to th overthink, uh, uh, outthink the opponent, and do something to nullify. Completely different, yeah, no, Null yeah. nullify what they are changing. So I, again here, the first exchange actually matters the most. Yes. And that sets the tone on how the last of the round is going to go. Okay, and we are moving on to the fight. Let's go. Yes. So, again with, uh, with this kind of shrunk hood. And still a bit. Okay, there's some. Oh, oh, advice, advice from the audience to strike the head. <laughs> Okay, there's some change of cuts, no but no quality, no, no, yeah. No, yeah. No quality, yeah. yeah. Nothing scored. Okay, there yeah. was a thrust. Yeah, and, and th there was no tell on that thrust. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't I, I, get scored. It look, yeah, it looked like it missed. Like. Yeah, no yeah. I mean, okay. that was a good, good thing from, from Josipin to do. That, yeah, that, was, yeah. that was a smart play. Yeah. Because now it forces Anna to overthink, uh, can, I, can I move forward, can I come to the do range of the thrust? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do I have to take into account yeah. the point? Yeah, yeah still, still a bit careful. Yeah. Okay, now there's a hand snipe. I think that's yes. going to be one blue. One yeah, blue, okay. One blue. We're moving to two and four. four two. And, and these kind of, in these kinds of fights, like, even one point can make a big difference. Okay, but Anna no. back in the corner, Josephine on a boom. Mm. There it goes. That's going to be two red, one red. Okay, it may be catch the shoulder instead yeah, of the head. Yeah, instead of the head, yeah. 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 Now Josephine did, did, did like an immediate change after getting hit. Yeah, she like, was pushing. that's really smart tactically. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good fencing. Yeah. She's kind of varying this pushing and waiting game. Yeah. And it's working beautifully for her. Yeah. Oh, break. Okay, I grappled. Yeah, I think it, it was there wasn't a really shot. any. Yeah, yeah. so no, no power in it. Okay, that's and When you get that kind of grapple, you sort of need to start beating the other other yeah. person to get the point. Well, being like, very clear, but that, that yeah. might be something that they're now discussing is that there, there was a show of dominance. There was an but, ability to cut maybe back of the head, maybe something like this. But if, like you, if you want to show dominance, you actually want to show like a proper yeah, strike. So it's, it's, it's a big... And here we go. Yeah, yeah, for domination. It was yeah. awarded. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now it's a five-point lead. It's that's gonna be a tough. No, yeah. no, it, it is catchable, but but something needs to change. Yeah, definitely. two pointers need to start happening. No. Okay, now this. That's gonna be up. a repost. How about the cut? Seems to land before the. Yeah, I think. Uh, the I think block. it was. Yeah, after blow was called late. Yeah. Maybe with a loading action or something. Four-point difference. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. that's a cut to the arm. That's yes. one blue. No, it's no. a cut to the. Got to the head, upper yeah, opening. Yeah. There was, a, there was no, like a very small arc. Okay, now this we're... is getting interesting. Yes. Now there's two points difference. Well, let's see if there's enough time. Okay. I think that's gonna be yeah. Uh, two points each. Two points each. Yeah, yes. both points yes. scored a hit to the head. Yeah, and here it's important to see what the time is to know how many exchanges yeah. you're gonna take because if there's, there's okay, gonna be a cut to the hand. hand. Okay, now there's only one point lead, so we can one now see lead. the momentum shifting. Yes. Last okay, last exchange. exchange. Okay, this is you, tough. You need Let's to see. take a two-pointer or a clear one. Clear one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's easier for uh, red suicide. Let's see what happens. Okay. Is Let's that, see. Is, is it quality in red, Scott? That's gonna get called. No points, red. Two, two points, points, blue. Oh, it's a reverse. In the last possible exchange, wow. on the for Did the stage not the see match. that happening. That was brilliant okay. reversal. Like absolutely great turnaround yes, on yeah. the event. A warm embrace from the coach. Yeah, oh. like five, six point lead on, on red yeah. and catching up to that with change of tactics. Yeah. Absolutely stellar job. Yes, that, that's definitely something that feels as a, good as a fencer. Yeah, yes. to figure it up and it out and then just solidly be. Anna Farnafons wins. 
Well done. That was uh, impressive. Yes, and, and that she was gets impressive. A, gets a beautiful trophy for her, her efforts. And, uh, yeah. and I, I knew before these, these fights that Anna has actually been a bit sick, a bit injured. Yeah. So she's not been fighting during the day. So this was, a, I think it was a huge moment for her. Yeah. And, and she's, she's been growing up as a fencer in the last year uh, quite a lot. Team Örebro being very happy about the home win yes. as they should be. Well done. Well a good done. display. Good display. Yes. So now we will, as soon as we get the winner here into the interview area, we are going to have uh, the winner's interview. So looking to hear about the feelings and thoughts. Yes. How does this feel? Yes. Okay, and hello everyone, I'm back again. Uh, very exciting now because I get to be with the winner of this tournament, Anna Färnefors of Örebro Hema. Um, first of all, obvious question, how do you feel? Uh, fucking amazing. <laughs> I can imagine. Do you feel like this matches, like this was a very marvelous outcome and an amazing turnaround. Do you feel like it matches the expectations you had uh, on this competition and on yourself when you were coming in? Um, honestly, I didn't have any ex expectations. Um, I know this is a... These are some of the top fencers in the world, and I didn't expect to go this far, and I never expected to win. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just blown away. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Well, it's been an amazing show, uh, a marvelous display of fencing from all involved, especially you, of course. Um, so, do you say now it's time to go back, celebrate with the rest of your club? How will you spend your evening? Uh, probably drinking beer. <laughs> That sounds very nice. Well, again, congratulations so much. So very much. well done. Uh, thank you for coming by. And uh, yeah, everyone, please, the winner of uh, the Örebro Invitational <laughs> Women's Longsword. Thank you. Excellent evening of fencing. Good matches. Yes, yes. Uh, Still our job, there being Team Örebro. We're yes. really, really happy about the win. Yes. They have been looking forward to this. Yeah. And I, I think kind of the theme of the evening in, in fencing-wise was changing strat strategies. We see a lot of fights where it, you either win or lose by changing or what you're doing. Yeah, you need to, when it's a, such a short fight, you need to adapt, especially when it's a cutoff of eight points. Yes. You, you need to do something to change if you, if you are like behind four points or something. So that was yeah. a great reversal at the finals. It was very good to see. Yes. Uh, that's been all, folks. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, have a good night and keep watching HEMA. Good night, good fight.